Darshna Bhadra, the Assistant Editor of Thermal Control Magazine, and I'd like to welcome you to our interactive session on automation and cold chain warehousing. To discuss the solutions and technologies, I invite our speakers, Mr. Parth Thakkar, Director, Paul Frost Aircon Private Limited, Mr. Vishnu Sashidharan, VP Climate Technologies plus Advanced Technologies, Mr. Rajat Gupta, Co-Founder and CEO of Tesol, and Mr. Swari Bose, Founder and CEO of Celsius Logistics. So get ready for an interactive session on automation and cold chain warehousing. So for panel discussion, I would like to invite all our guest speakers, starting with you, Mr. Vishnu. Uh, can you tell me what opportunities and growth do you see for automation in cold chain and warehousing, including handling equipment for commodity? From our point of view, we are basically a thermal management solution provider using phase change material based solutions which is primarily used for decarbonization. So our goal is to increase energy efficiency. And some of the opportunities that I clearly see today is that the uh, the need for visibility of how much energy is being consumed and wh where are the inefficiencies in. And uh, while we monitoring temperature, monitoring electricity, the, 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 there could be many parameters that you can monitor. You could monitor also the how many number of times you open and close your cold warehouses. Is it being operated in, in, inefficiently? But uh, we have interacted with uh, you know end users, operators, where we really need, needed some insight on where is the inefficiencies coming from. We, we, we feel that there is a lot of visibility lacking. Most of the time, the data is not the, the data is not accurate, or the data is not what you can really conclusively, you know, act upon. So maybe I can dwell further on when other panelists also share their views on certain applications or use, or certain use cases where we have come across areas of you know gap where the where the industry can actually plug plug in with technology. So. I would also like to give my two bits about it. So when it comes okay. to automation and all, see in 2021, about 80% of the warehouses in India, cold chain warehouses, didn't have any kind of automation. They didn't have a proper WMS system. They had nothing. WMS systems are something that people have started using a lot of warehouse management system. So that to some level has brought some automation to manual processes where where the data, the analytics, everything is happening on the WMS. It's still not as widespread as we would want it to be. Like world over, the WMS is a, almost a $900 billion industry. But in India, our cold chain warehousing doesn't see too much of that technology being used. It's predicted that across the world, by 2027, about more than 70% of operations happening in warehouses will be automated and robotics will come in and and the placements of products and e-com and everything is going to go into robotics. How much India is going to catch up with that by 2027 is for us to see yet. But automation is going to be the way ahead in the future, especially with e-com play coming into warehousing a lot. Companies like Zepto, Zomato, Swiggy, all going into the cold storage space, managing frozen food. And, and different kinds of technologies which are already prevalent around the world are slowly coming into India and people have started adopting it. While it's a slow process, we are still moving ahead. That's a positive thing. Thank you, Mr. Swarup and Vishnu to share your insights about this. So, Mr. Park, can you let me know how the digital transformation using IoT and AI technologies can bring in supply chain sustainability? And by any means, is it easing the labor shortage? You know, AI and digital transformation and WMS and whatever automation we talk of basically is is far from where we are right now in India. It's something that we definitely are looking up to. Okay, something that we are definitely wanting to implement in our warehouses and we are wanting to make maximum use of it. But we as a country today are far from realizing the benefits of it because we are not even at the ground level of the implementation of these technologies. As far as reaping the benefits go, like Swarup rightly said, probably by 2027, if we keep some targets, which is four or five years from now, we may we may have some considerable target setting and goal setting to which we can look forward to. And the technologies that are required today to implement all of this digitization and the WMS and the capacity building of the 
of the warehousing and the cold chain segment of the country the equipment and the the know how is all available to us it's that is nothing out of reach for us today as a country because in terms of digitization we have reached quite fast to a place where the the developed countries have reached in a lot of years especially because of the digitization of the payments and digitization of an overall infrastructure in, throughout the country so there is definitely a lot of speed seen in terms of adapt in terms of the adaptation of the technologies but at the same time we as a country are far from equipped i would say because the mindset needs to change the education needs to come in to the ground level people operating the equipment without which the the best of the technologies implemented might still pose a big challenge of failure without having the proper people to operate it even as swarup mentioned the wms technology that even as we have asrs technologies coming up inside of warehouse all of those technologies today are left to only the big players and the organized market and the ground reality of the country is still far from being an organized player in this segment so there are a handful of people who can implement these technologies today but the major chunk or the mass of the country that is still there quite reach from the disadvantages of not having the know how even now that is what i feel thank you mr rajat do you want to add something to this most of the most of the points it's like you first need to start with the basics and then get into sort of more advanced use, use of technologies and you know when you talk about more advanced concepts you need to first have the data data coming in in order to train your model right then only you'll be able to at least understand what's going on here everything is mostly experience thumb rules you know, still sort of sheets of data being filled up so there's a long way to go for us to to get there having said that i think as a as a country and as a set of people we have we've kind of proven once you get access to the right technologies and you sort of it, it gets into your your way of doing things we are able to adapt very quickly we don't we're not very resistant to change and that's something that we've been seeing at with with some of our deployments in the field where you know regular delivery people have been catching up and they've been sort of getting very quickly adapted to to temperature monitoring and and you know sending across data and information so they they're very savvy and therefore implementation doesn't seem to be a major problem it's more of a decision making at the top level and and people are quite happy to accept adoption of technology in the country that's that's our limited experience thank you so mr swaru in your view how the warehousing companies can scale up to accommodate the transformations happening across the country houses that are built especially cold chain warehouses that are built in india are pretty standard because most of them apply for subsidies so they follow a set rules and guidelines on how to build it so the problem is not with the infra that they've created the problem is more towards the mindset going into multi commodity storage opening up the storage for e-com platforms making sure e-commerce people can can come in and work because the play with e-commerce which is like the big movement in india right now requires a very different mindset from traditional warehousing where it's not about material coming in bulk and then going in bulk on a certain date and the rest of the time it is in storage it's more about day in day out piece in piece out the labor has to be trained like that and generally the labor the operations the manpower is managed by the warehouse people so they need to make sure that the training of the labor adaptation of systems created by the e-com platforms to track their inventory like inventory management systems that are there in place they need to have better dios and supervisors who can adapt to this the infra that they built now needs to be modified a little bit like where anti chamber is there generally in a warehouse the anti chambers are not temperature controlled they are basically a room which is supposed to be transit we take it from here keep it here and then we put it back in the temperatures ambient temperatures in india are crossing 45 50 degrees at places in such a case any frozen material that you take out and keep even for 10 minutes are going to lose the temperature they are either going to start melting or become soft and then the experience of the end user goes for a toss so 
where house people need to understand that they need to upgrade themselves by creating the proper anti chambers making sure it's a temperature controlled environment making sure dock areas are with the correct buffers so that there is no temperature breakage of the product right from the point you accept it to the point you keep it in your storage and obviously then getting into iot's and better wms i don't i don't see a place where our indian economy will allow for automations with robotics and all today nobody is going to pay for it i'm sure all my other panelists know this we bring in technology we won't pay you for it as long as it is free we'll adapt it that's what most of the clients will be speaking about while that change can come in the future but today at least we can work towards making sure that the products that are coming in especially on a day to day basis the transactions that are happening can happen in the more professional manner and using more technology adapting to that that was quite insightful mr vishnu would you like to add something to this yeah i mean what swarup mentioned is correct we don't need very high high tech technologies right now but basically there is an awareness of energy efficiency that is coming in i would go back to the same where we have had some experience where customers are willing to pay for the technology as long as you you prove that you know you can bring in efficiency and then that brings in cooling as a service which is would be something interesting to discuss among the panelists and with our limited experience we have first tried to you know understand what is the as as a scenario and that is where we find it very difficult to you know before we implement the technology even with all the conviction tomorrow how do you you know how do you explain or prove that this is how the energy efficiencies have been brought in so many of the cold warehouses don't have the basic infra to measure and without measurement we are not able to assess what is the current situation uh, so a, a, a lot goes in in the study to in the initial quality study itself of you know uh, what is the as uh, a situation and sometimes very very minor operational tweaks itself can bring in a lot of efficiency you don't require technology as such so yeah that's about it so mr raja can you let me know what refrigerant solutions inside the ac units for trucks and refill containers bringing optimization so depends upon what is the i think the solution to any problem really depends upon what the requirement is for example if you're looking at at short haul movements and smaller truck movements then you can then you can look at passive cooled boxes you can look at passive cooled containers as well if you're looking at longer distance movements or you're looking at at larger trucks then probably solutions like like you know your your tactic based solutions would make sense for uh, for sort of distribution kind of application within 24 hours if you're going relatively longer distance uh, you know you you're going full load whatever 20 32 feet kind of trucks then then the conventional solutions that are available are are quite efficient and they've been working well in those scenarios so i think it really depends upon it it, it really it's not a one size fits all kind of a solution and 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 that's what that's what the users need to understand because the optimization is a is really a function of of finding what the application is and then fitting the right technology to it rather than saying one technology is you know i i'll adopt one technology and apply across the across the board and that's my limited view on this in fact question about what refrigerant in the reefer trucks <laughs> they they are advocates of not using any refrigerant because they are the ones who are who are pushing the bounds on technology where refrigerant is not used in reefer trucks so you take take in pcms so these guys are just going to bash on that entire thing but yeah i think vishnu has to give his views also on this question yeah and yeah you we, we have not been able to or successfully been able to totally isolate refrigerants we would love to rajat right <laughs> but then you need you, you need to create energy to you know to store and just like i think the lithium ion battery spaces for the electric vehicles i guess pcm is for thermal management and it's just not just pcm there are so many ways of storing but storage gives you so much of flexibility and in supply chain i think it is quite i think we have come quite far we i mean in the last 10 years i think there's so many industry players so many companies talking about it giving solutions it's so it was so much more different when we were talking about only ice packs at some point today you you can mitigate dry ice so you bring in you know, unique solutions to keep 
frozen or move frozen products. So you bring in circularity. You can and with thermal energy storage and PCMs, our goal is that as much as possible you can optimize and not use fossil fuel, and also it promotes the use of renewable energy. So with the storage medium, you can you can run, but still again you have a refrigerant based cooling unit. So we have not been able to mitigate that fully, but you can reduce the use definitely. See, I, I think one just just to add to Vishnu. A, a combination of storage and and direct use of energy kind of gives you gives you an opportunity to optimize, right? It's like you whether you keep your laptop completely plugged in or you take it out when you want it, and you've got the mobility, and then you plug it back again. So that's the kind of flexibility that these solutions offer. And so it really depends upon your usage. If you're more mobile, then you probably charge for for a bit and then move around around and and have more storage. If you have a short use, you'll have a shorter amount of storage. So earlier, these options were not available. So people couldn't even think of optimizing. The only way you could do is use a landline and be stuck near the phone set and talk on it. Otherwise, you can't move around, right? So these options have given you ability to optimize and and sort of move beyond the the regular optimization strategies, which is reducing price and cutting corners, right? So... So that's where I think technologies help. But again, having said that, the users like Suroop would take take the right call saying for this application, this makes more sense for me. And for this application, something else. Even a traditional one is not going out of the out of business anytime soon. Right. So so I think it's it's all a function of how a user wants to optimize his system and, and technology providers would give up. Hello, Mr. Swaru. Would you like to add something to this? Rather to reduce your prices, I'll, I'll adopt more and more of energy efficient systems. There. No, but so th these guys are building for the future, very honestly. I don't see a scenario where fossil fuel based system is going to be an approach in the near future. And uh, and both these companies have been on the forefront. I've known both these companies for ages now. In fact, we work together. So I know for a fact that this is going to be the wave of the future for, for the reefer industry slowly going into warehousing industry. So, yeah, they they are the best experts to talk about this. Thank you. So, Mr. Path, can you add something? What initiatives need to be taken by government and private sector to induce growth in warehousing automation industry? So, as far as the government is concerned, I don't know how the impetus to the warehousing industry can be given except for giving subsidies in terms of adopting new technologies and making things as seamless as possible in terms of those subsidies because cold chain per se relies only on costs and everyone wants to reduce the cost as much as possible which is not possible without any help from the government so that's the only thing I see as a help coming in from them as far as private sector is concerned you know there are many steps that could be taken where banks could give reduced interest rates to people adopting new technology, people implementing, you know, green initiatives, because that is something that the private sector has already been doing and getting support from the banks on. And, you know, cold chain today is a very heavy industry as far as costs are concerned. And those costs can't ever be transferred to the end customer is what the rule is. Which, which makes for this entire ecosystem, including Swarup, to always be demanding lesser and lesser prices from everyone in the ecosystem. And, you know, somewhere we all need to stop on, I mean, stop focusing on lesser costs and focusing more on optimization of costs. And that's where the automation and the IoT and all of that will come into picture. And that's where the green technologies will come into picture because optimization is where the game lies. As of today, in our in our industry, there is a lot of wastage, there is a lot of over design, and there is a lot of expenditure on breakdowns, which can all be reduced by you know, using futuristic technologies. So, government, I feel, has a role to play only in helping to reduce the costs. Private sector, yeah, can do a lot, and banks can definitely be of good help to industry adopting greener infrastructure and focusing towards optimization of energy. Mr. Swarif, as a user, would you like to add anything? Yeah, sure. 
see, government is already working towards a digital revolution. We have seen the, the steps that the government has taken to digitize different logistics arm, digit, uh, in, in fact, digitizing the e-com play. Uh, that is one thing that the government can do today by trying to digitize the warehousing supply chain also. When they push, the best part is the tier two, tier three cities respond much faster. Adoption of technologies when it comes from the government and via their propaganda is much easier to adopt for the smaller cities than it is for the larger cities. We are working across 350 cities in India. So we run into trouble when we try to explain how technology can assist them. While our platform remains free for everyone to use, so it becomes a little easier as an entry barrier for us. But adopting other technologies, which is going to cost them a pretty penny more, where they are already not making money, is, is a challenge. So that is where government can step in. And to add to Path's point, there are banks who are now using technology that, like WMS or inventory management systems, that the smaller storages are using to underwrite the risk and give them a better rate of interest. Because now the banks realize, okay, so you have the systems, your wastage will be less, your business will be more successful, you're tracking data successfully. So yeah, let, let me give you some discount on the, on the rate of interest. Because of which, it encourages the players to then start adopting these systems more. So yes, they are also doing their bit. And hopefully with the amalgamation of all these processes together, we see much more benefit come out of this. It was nice to hear both the perspectives. So we have come to the end of the session. So Mr. Rajat, can you provide a closing statement? Right. I, I think I think just to just to summarize from a you know from a technology standpoint, all of us sort of discuss the importance of adopting technology in warehousing as well as logistics. But the barriers to those to, to adoption seems to be more on the cost awareness perspective and and to figure out what could be the you know if, if there are any potential government subsidies any levers that can help accelerate the adoption of this technology across the cold chain